So thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we're going to conduct uh, or start our session now uh, talking about the Commerce Cloud mobile first reference architecture. Um, I did want to point out that we are doing a quick survey for anyone who's interested in giving us some feedback. Um, so you can scan this QR code with your camera and it will take you to a Google survey uh, or you can type in that, that bit.ly link. Um, we will show it at the end of the presentation as well just as a refresher. Um, and it would be great to get your feedback so we would really uh, thank you for doing that in advance. Um, so we're here today to talk about the mobile first reference architecture that Commerce Cloud provides. Um, I'm Jim Lynch, I'm a product manager. I'm joined with, uh, by Ilya and Savita, who are uh, the technologists that lead the mobile first reference architecture team. Wanted to start out with the, um, the slide that you've probably seen in every session, which is the forward-looking statements. Um, we are gonna be talking about some products and functionality that is not yet generally available, um, and I'd encourage you to make your buying decisions based on those products that are currently GA. So I'm gonna start out with a quick overview um, just to set the stage of what the mobile first reference architecture is um, and give you some overviews of uh, information about what we've done um, over the last year that we've been working on it, some of the improvements that we've made to the reference architecture and some of our goals for the project. Um, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Ilya and Savita to go into much more detail about the actual technology that's running under the hood of this new, uh, new version of the reference architecture. Um, they're gonna do some demos, show you how to customize things in code, and I think it'll be really exciting and interesting for you all to see. So I wanted to frame the conversation about mobile first um, in the lens of our full set of priorities that we're looking to do um, with the Commerce Cloud development experience. Um, and, and a lot of these themes are, are common to what you hear about with Salesforce DX, um, but our real goal as a uh, development platform is to make it really easy and efficient for our developers to write code uh, using the tools and technologies that they're familiar with, um, like common technologies like JavaScript and common editors, um, and then have a really efficient and automated way of um, qualifying that code, testing it, deploying it, and getting it out into production in a really seamless and efficient way. Um, and one of the things that we're looking at doing, um, specifically with the mobile first reference architecture, is making it much easier to, to um, have a more automated and testable um, storefront code base. Um, and we think that kind of ties into the full spectrum of things that we're doing uh, to improve the Commerce Cloud development experience. So what is the reference architecture? Um, we at Commerce Cloud, um, as most of you uh, might know, provide our customers the ability to deliver online storefronts for selling their products to end consumers. Um, and the reference architecture provides them a starting point or a template for building those storefronts on top of Commerce Cloud. So they leverage our uh, technology, the set of you know, templates, the user experience, the underlying architecture that Ilya and Savita and team have built as the starting point for their own uh, experiences and storefronts on, on top of our platform. Um, we've incorporated in this new version of the reference architecture um, a, a focus on mobile first user experience. You know, so we see the, the mobile trends are, are really obvious across our customer base. So we've been able to infer a lot of best practices to optimize for mobile experience, for mobile conversion, um, you know, based on the 2,000 customer sites that we have running now and the something like 500 million shopper visits that we see over the course of you know, a given holiday period. Um, and then our customers are able to take this foundation and make really unique and exciting shopper experiences. You know, some of the examples you see here are you know, Puma in, uh, in Europe, uh, Buclair, which is a furniture retailer in North America, uh, and JBC, which is a Belgian fashion company, um, have all built really unique and sophisticated mobile experiences leveraging the foundation of our reference architecture under the hood. Um, and we're really excited about more customers being able to take advantage of this as we move towards GA uh, in the first half of this year. Powering all those great experiences is a really updated and improved and robust architecture um, that we've added as part of this new version of the, of the reference application. Um, we think it'll make it a lot better and easier for our merchants to customize their storefronts and innovate faster and quickly. Um, it'll be easier for them to make um, customizations and then update those customizations in a more seamless and automated way to make maintenance a lot better. Um, and we've also incorporated a new extension model so that you can quickly extend the storefront capabilities that you have with the different 
integrations that we provide in the link marketplace, uh, which is our equivalent to the app exchange. So you can add in ratings and reviews, your payment provider, your tax provider, um, in a much more kind of easily extendable way um, and incorporate that into your storefront quickly and easily. So with this new reference architecture, we've made a lot of improvements um, in, in focusing on some of these objectives and, and, and trying to tie into some of those developer priorities I talked to earlier. Um, you know, we've, we've focused on upgradability and maintenance and easier customization. Uh, we've also focused on accessibility because this is something that is increasingly important uh, to our customers and we wanted to make sure that they were able to deliver a really accessible experience to their shoppers. We've incorporated the Bootstrap mobile framework uh, to make it a little bit easier and seamless for building really strong mobile experiences uh, on top of Commerce Cloud. Um, and as I said, we've, we've focused on that mobile user experience as a way to help our customers connect with shoppers on you know, the, the form factor that they're most frequently coming to our sites on. So with that said, um, I'm really excited to turn it over to Ilya and Savita to get into a lot more details about the architecture. Um, and then um, we'll have a bit of a demo uh, during that process as well, and we'll have some time for questions at the end as well. All right. Great. Hi. Uh, my name is Ilya Valadin. I'm an architect for the MFRA team, um, and I'll be talking a little bit more in details about the architecture of MFRA and extension model. Um, so um, as part of the MFRA project, uh, one of the things that we've done is focus on separation of concerns in our code and switch much more closely to a standard MVC pattern that uh, a lot of you would be familiar with. Um, so if you're familiar with the previous generation of um, our storefront application, uh, Cygenesis, um, it was written using sort of MVC approach, but there was a lot of code inside templates. Um, the models were not really representing the data and controllers were not like fully testable. Um, so in mobile first reference architecture, we focused on separation of concerns and moving closer to a standard MVC patterns. Uh, we removed all of the code uh, all of the business logic from the templates and move them into models. Models now represent the data and controllers basically create models and serve the views. Um, so uh, Jim already mentioned that one of the things that we focused on also is extensibility um, and uh, a sort of a different approach on how the customers would customize the storefront that we deliver. Uh, previously in say Genesis, you would basically take our code and modify it any which way you want uh, to make it your own. Um, that prevented you from upgrading going forward because you've modified the code. Now you need to do a diffing between what we upgraded and what you have and manually copy everything in. Wasn't a very sustainable process. Um, with uh, mobile first, uh, we're sort of introducing this concept of overlay cartridges. Um, so instead of taking our code and modifying it directly, you would take our code, you would use it as a base, and then you would create overlay cartridges that extend our code. And in order to um, allow you to do it more easily, we introduced some of the platform features um, that would help you with um, pinpointing the code in our base implementation that you want to extend. Um, so there are two features uh, that we introduced, a common JS star prefix, uh, which would basically tell the system to find a file from the top of your cartridge list. Um, so the base would be at the very bottom of the cartridge list, your customization cartridge would be at the top, um, and everywhere in between you can use a star to just basically go to the top of the stack and, and find the appropriate file from the top. Um, same, same kind of concept with the, the module, that super module property, uh, but instead of going from the top of the list, it goes from the current cartridge that you're in um, downwards. So that allows you to take anywhere you are in the stack of the cartridges um, and go down to the uh, l one layer below or multiple layers if there's no matching file in the one in, in the uh, layer that is directly under yours. Um, and that allows you to find the code that was introduced in the previous cartridge in the base, for example pull it in and extend it um, to give you, to, to add your own functionality to it. So now we wanted to show you a demo of how we implement 
um, an overlay cartridge which adds additional functionality to mobile first reference architecture and Savita is going to do that. So, one second. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's bringing up my screen. Uh, my name is Savita Velgaukar and uh, I'm an engineering manager for the mobile first reference architecture team. So today I get the privilege of walking you through the nice clean storefront experience we've built using MFRA. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the MFRA is working out of the box. And then we are going to have a magic done in the back where we are going to add a cartridge where you'll be able to see additional functionality. And just see for yourself what Ilya just described, how easy it is to just have your own code maintain and add it on to the MFRA. So let's go shopping. <laughs> Um, so I'm actually going to go shopping for my husband today. My husband has been losing weight, and I need to buy him a pair of slim pants. So let me go find some pants for him. As you can see. All right. All right, there you go. There are some slim pants. I think they're going to look nice on him. So... I get to pick the color. And as I said, he's really lost weight now. So I'm going to add them to the cart. So the product is added to the cart. And when you look at the cart, you can see that the pants are there. And I say, what do I do? How do I get those? And I realized there is no option to actually pick up in my nearby store. I really want to go pick it up and put it in a nice gift wrap. So I don't like this. I'm going to cancel this order. And then let's play a magic of adding a cartridge where I'll be able to pick that up. So Ilya is going to go in the business manager and add a plugin. So I'm just refreshing my page. All right. All right, so I picked the same slim pants that I like for him. And pick a color, the size. And you can actually see right here there is a store pickup select store button that appeared now. I'm going to add it to the cart and then decide which store should I go pick it up from. So now you see. I'm going to say. Store pickup. different size. Maybe it's not available in the store nearby, so. <laughs> you did? There you go. So I'm going to type in my zip code. And it's going to show me all the options where I can pick up the, the pants. Um, so I pick the one that's closest to me. I say select a store and add to cart. Now, 
there are two products in my cart. Um, so this is the one with the pickup in store, and this is the one without the store. So now Ilya is going to actually go behind um, and show you the, do a code walkthrough as to how we managed to just do this uh, by adding an overlay and no more messing up with the base code for MFRA cartridge. Uh, yeah, just to sort of prefix um, the stuff that I'm going to show you is, first of all, this is still in the development. The, the uh, in-store pickup cartridge is currently being developed. Um, second, um, what you saw did not require any modification to the base MFRA implementation. Everything that you saw, all the additional functionality and interactions were added in the overlay cartridge without touching the base code. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of an overview of what went into adding that functionality to an overlay cartridge, how we sort of achieve that. Um, this is a pretty big cartridge. It touches a lot of areas of the site. It touches the product details page, as you saw. It touches the cart. It definitely touches a lot in the checkout because we also give you the ability to um, select a store in the checkout um, and, and, and so on. Um, so there's a lot of changes here. Uh, but I wanted to focus sort of the, on the MVC um, approach structure and, and show you how we modified models, uh, controllers, and templates, and client-side code um, in the overlay cartridge to extend the functionality. So let's start with controllers, for example. Um, so product page, right, we, we've done a lot of modifications there to add this whole um, pop-up to select an additional product uh, or information like uh, a store that you want to select it, pick it up from. Um, as you can see, the modifications to your controller is actually pretty minimal. Um, majority of the functionality already existed inside Genesis Base. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, this extension uh, model that we added, the module, that super module property, that kind of allows you to pull in the uh, product controller from the underlying base cartridge and extend it and append an additional uh, step to a middleware route for show. Um, so that you can actually uh, save the pick up and store information that you, the, the store that you selected. Um, so we also modified the cart controller. Uh, that one is a little bit more uh, involved. Uh, we are replacing the route for adding a product because we need to not only add the product to a cart, we also need to add that product with the store information that you selected. Uh, so that the store is persisted in the cart. Um, so we basically overwrote the route for adding a product and added the additional information for saving the store. Um, there are also some modifications in checkout and uh, the store, which is the um, controller that deals with the store locator itself. Um, we needed the ability to search for a list of stores um, based on the product ID that you passed in. We only want you to show you the stores that have the product uh, that you're looking for in the inventory. Um, so we added additional uh, routes uh, that would allow you to do that. So those are kind of modifications for controllers. Um, models, uh, we had to do some modifications to the existing models. For example, product, again, we needed to do modifications uh, to a product to be able to store uh, the information about the store that you selected. Um, so uh, as if you've looked at MFRA code recently, um, you know, we kind of modified the um, product model uh, to use a decorator pattern. Um, so we're adding a new decorator in here uh, for in-store pickup. Um, and that decorator is going to add uh, information about the store selected to the product. Um, and as I mentioned, the star common JS prefix would allow you to pull um, the file uh, available for in-store pickup from the top level cartridge. So let's say if you wanted to install this in-store pickup cartridge, and then you wanted to modify the decorator, um, you don't have to modify it here. You can create another overlay cartridge with the file with exact naming convention that, that you're seeing here, and that star will make sure that the file is pulled from the top level cartridge. So if yours is sitting on top, that's the one that's going to be taken. 
Um, so the decorator itself just basically adds um, an additional property to the product model. Um, you know, we, we, we've done some modifications to product line items. Uh, again, same kind of deal. We added the decorator for it to uh, uh, add the from store ID property, which will have the ID of the store that the product is be being picked up from. Um, we also modify the models for cart, shipping, and stores again. Um, so we also modified some helpers, uh, cart helpers, for example. We needed to add some properties to like adding a product to a cart. We uh, needed to make sure that if you already have a product in the cart that you're picking up from the same store that you're currently trying to pick up a new product from, it, they will be merged into a single shipment. Um, so we added some helpers around that, uh, but that's basically net new code. Uh, it's not overriding anything in the base, it's just adding additional functionality. Um, in the checkout, we, we've added some helpers, uh, and in general in store pickup, we've added some helpers. Um, so for templates, uh, we modified some of the components that are used on the product details page, like for example, product availability. Uh, we overwrote those templates to show you the additional button for picking up in store, to show you the store that was selected, um, the inventory information about the store that you selected, and, and so on and so forth. Also did some modifications in the cart to display the store information that you selected the product from, um, checkout, and uh, store locator. Right, and on the client side, we've also did some modifications to product, for example. Um, <clears throat> so we hooked into some uh, events that the base uh, fires when the product is updated. Um, so whenever the update add to cart event is fired, which is the event that is fired whenever the add to cart button becomes enabled or disabled uh, based on the attributes that you selected, we're doing some additional checks there for inventory for the store to make sure that the button is enabled properly and you can pick it up from the, the right store that you selected. Uh, and just a, a bunch more client-side scripts that are around, that are all adding functionality to a client side for pick, picking up products in the store. Um, some additional uh, overrides for cart checkout um, and uh, just overrides of the top level file. So basically uh, for product details page, this is the file that we serve. Um, so we inherit the base um, implementation of the code and then we're adding this PDP in store inventory file that we added with this cartridge. Um, uh, it will be all combined into a single JavaScript file at the compile time and serve back uh, on the PDP page. Um, on, I think on the CSS side or SAS, uh, we haven't really overwritten much. We just added some additional styling for in-store inventory dialog and, and so on and so forth, but we haven't really changed anything because we're adding new functionality, not updating existing ones. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, this is sitting on top of the base, but it's not modifying anything in the base. So if in the future there's an update for product details page, for example, de uh, delivered by us in the base cartridge, you can still take that without really having to go through this diffing exercise and trying to figure out which code is, uh, was updated in the base, which code you updated yourself, and, and kind of merging all of that in. Um, and. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the dive into the code of this overlay cartridge. Uh, um, if, if you know, if you're kind of uh, following the MFRA, you know that we're trying to separate out the features um, that are not used by everyone, like pick up and store, not every uh, merchant out there has a physical store location, so it's not applicable to the customers who don't have physical stores. Um, so we don't wanna ship it as part of the base implementation uh, because that would mean those customers would have to then spend time ripping out that code. Um, so we're, we're putting them into overlay cartridges and then you can combine those overlay cartridges into the solution that you want to start with and, and modify it, on you know, put your modifications on top of that solution. 
cartridges in the uh, MFRA bit bucket as well as of now. So we have product compare. Those of you attended the overview yesterday, you saw a, 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 a quick peek at that. And then we also have Apple Pay uh, as a ready cartridge for you to use. So this definitely is starting to help a lot in terms of how you can actually have your own code base and not worry about take, making copies and so on. And in future, as we go ahead and um, add more functionality for the MFR base, it's going to be very useful for all of you to get, uh, make use of that right away. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to come forward to the, yeah, please come forward to the mic. And, Um, we do not currently have that. I mean, the metadata is, is basically up to a customer, um, the way it's constructed. There is uh, There are no limitations in terms of namespacing or something like that. However, uh, you can definitely add namespacing yourself. It's, it's just not um, hard-coded you know, into the platform. Um, it definitely can support uh, namespacing, uh, but that would be up to the implementer to do it that way. It's a good suggestion. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Second is, uh, so let's say if I, you launch a new base cartridge and I bring it in, uh, if all, if let's say you have introduced five new features yeah. on existing pages, is there a way to, for me to easily pick and choose which features I want on my site and which I don't want? Um, Good, good question. Uh, for the most part, when we would be introducing the base modifications, uh, as I mentioned, we're trying to kind of like isolate the fixes or, or, or uh, features that are applicable to everyone versus the features that are applicable to uh, some. Um, so the, 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 the changes that we would introduce in the base usually would be something that at least we assume everybody would want. Uh, however, uh, there is no well-defined mechanism as to how you pick and choose, but because you have the ability to overlay the code with your own customizations, you can always pick and choose in those customizations. So you can, for example, like if uh, we introduce the feature that you don't want for, for whatever reason, um, you can overlay that feature with basically the previous code um, and that feature is gonna go away. So, but if you're asking in terms of, say if you have five different features uh, actually developed in five different cartridges, then you can turn it on and off based on what you want to do. Yeah. Like they're just not included. Mm -hmm. But if it's like a base, let's say on PDP you introduce a new button, something becomes really popular and you introduce it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now my template is not handling that button. It's not branded to my 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 client. Mm -hmm. Right. So how do I first of all will I get a list of pages or something which will tell me, okay, on this page if you don't want it, override this to remove it from your template. Because if I'm automatically integrating a lot of things, let's say I didn't create my template. I'm using your template. I just added my own mm -hmm. CDN on top of it, right? Right. Um, I have a couple of clients who are doing that. In that case, that button will start showing with the default CDN, mm -hmm. uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. It, it's a possibility, yeah, definitely. It, it, it is a possibility. Um, in majority of the cases, um, I mean, unless we're talking about just skinning with CSS, uh, ISML itself, the templating language that we're using, doesn't really have a mechanism for extension. So anytime you would want to customize the look and feel outside of CSS uh, uh, of the page, you would kind of need to re-implement templates. Um, you can't extend the base ones. Meaning that once we modify the base template, you are no longer using the base te template, you're using your own implementation of it. Now, it's possible that you modify just pieces and bits, not the entire thing, and, and we modified, we added something to the piece that you haven't overlaid, but then you always have a choice of overlaying that particular piece that we modified with basically a base implementation. Uh, I, I, I mean, understand, I'm more thinking about operationally how it's going to work mm -hmm. for the client. Yeah. Um, on one hand, we're making it easy for them to take, uh, so that way, if I'm taking it, what all 
processes I have to do mm -hmm. to actually successfully be able to take it? Yeah. I think and I, what are the steps to be taken? Yeah, and I, and I think that's going to be, I, I don't think with this we aspire to instant automatic upgrades when we release something new to core. Okay. You know, what I think the process would, that we would recommend would be that you install that into a sandbox or a development environment with your existing customizations, with your existing extensions to go through a qualification to review it, right? And see what changes need to be made and updates might need to be made. Yeah. But, but we believe that process will still be much more straightforward and you know, easy than the current process, which is basically doing a big visual you know, diff of, of all the changes that were made in Site Genesis versus the, you know, the changes that have been made to the specific storefront you're trying to update. Yeah. Um, so one is, uh, so when I'm overriding a function, yeah. if let's say you make any bug fixes in the default or, mm -hmm. or the base, will I inherit those bug fixes or will I have to do, like if I take your new package, mm -hmm. uh, base package, will I inherit those bug fixes or because I have overridden the function, I have to do something extra? That definitely depends on how you override the function. Okay. Um, so in the examples, for example, uh, that, that, that I showed, um, uh, product model was a good example, right? Um, we extended, we added additional decorators in, but we called the base implementation first. We called the base, created the model, and then added additional features to it. So if you do it that way, yes, you will definitely get all of our fixes. Okay. If you override it by completely replacing the function with your own implementation, yeah. no, you okay. won't. Uh, it, it just depends on technical implementation. Okay. Yeah, I think if you guys can put together some guidelines, because we are starting we from we actually have some guidelines in place, so if you want to take a look at the... Yeah, sure, thank you. Sure, thank you. Any other questions? Anybody else? Could, could you come up to the, sta to the mic, please? implementers for developers for clients to take a fork of the MFRA repository yeah. and then work from that fork mm -hmm. and then merge your changes into the fork. Yeah. So that way you can choose which things you want to merge in. You can exactly. merge pull requests, things mm -hmm. like that, and maintain your own base of it. But then you have reference package changes that have been made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And uh, I think moving forward, once, once the uh, MFRA goes GA, there, there will be some areas that we can look into improvement, like for example, maybe some automated tools that will um, list you the list of, uh, show you the list of um, uh, templates that were modified in a recent pull request or, or the recent release or something like that, or maybe the list of uh, possible conflicts um, between the templates that you modified versus what was in the latest release. That, that's all possible. You can build those tools yourself right now, uh, but that's something that I would want to kind of look into sometime after the GA release in the future. All right. All right. So, so in terms of um, kind of wrapping up, you know, one of the things that I mentioned earlier is we are going to be bringing this to GA, uh, general availability, in the first half of this year. Um, and to that end, a lot of the stuff that we're working on between now and then is, you know, finishing buy online, pick up in store, which Ilya was just demoing uh, with Savita, but also a lot of the enablement materials that we're putting together to help support, you know, some of these best practices and things. Um, so stay tuned to our exchange platform. Um, there's a dedicated space there for um, discussions around mobile first reference architecture. There's also some education modules that are available now in our e-learning environment um, for building link cartridges um, and a design overview. Uh, and there's going to be a more in-depth customization and developer-oriented course that's coming out over the next couple of weeks as well. Um, and definitely reach out to us and engage with us either on Exchange. Uh, we do encourage you to participate in the Slack community that we have as well, because um, we are definitely looking for feedback in terms of how we can improve the core architecture, but also the different enablement stuff that we can improve on as well, just to help you, you know, define your own processes and start working with uh, this new version, you know, in an effective way. And if you have a minute, please take the survey. It's not going to take more than a minute or two, but it will be phenomenally useful for us moving forward to take your input. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.